Hi there, and welcome to installment nine of Achieve Wellbeing. I'm Dr. Lisa Kirk Brown, Doctor of Public Health with almost 30 years experience in preventive medicine, retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, and disabled American veteran. Today I want to talk to you about the first element in the mental aspects of well-being, and that's education. How education can help keep your brain comfortable, healthy, and happy. The brain is the most complex organ, as we discussed last installment. Keeping it healthy is extremely important, especially with age. Sleep, rest, diet, and some of the other things we've discussed in Achieve Wellbeing all affect brain health. However, I want to give you some other options of things to do to keep your brain functioning at its best level possible. Our brains oversee our daily function. So what we do day to day, how our body moves and what types of smells, tastes, other things that we take in. Brain health refers to the ability to be able to remember, learn, plan, concentrate, and maintain a clear and active mind. Things such as information management, logic, judgment, wisdom, and perspective are all functions of the brain. And as we age, some of the neurons in our brain lose connectivity, our brains get older and um, can become less vol vol voluminous as we age. Um, and some of, in my case, some of the myelin around the nerves can be impacted with um, just wear and tear, but with disease. The same things you do to keep your body functioning properly can also be used to keep your brain functioning properly. However, there's some other additional things that you can do and that I'd like to recommend in this talk for you to keep your brain operating at its best ability. We're not talking about intellectual capacity. We're not talking about your IQ. We're not talking about how well you think or what how well you're able to do in school. We're talking about your brain, however it is, that it can maintain its function. So wherever you started, you can maybe improve it a little bit or make it better. And we know this through our own experience. Many of you have made your brain function better. Um, maybe you remember a time when you had memory issues, uh, maybe you forgot things, or maybe you had a time when you could remember everything and you were able to just spout things off. When I was in high school, I worked at Kmart as a cashier, and this is before the days of scanners um, and automatic um, cash stuff. So we didn't even have swipe credit cards back in the day. We had to use a machine. I don't know if some of the older people that are watching may remember that. Well, um, I had to remember the ad on Wednesdays and Sundays, and I had to remember how to give back change. So I had to be able to do math in my head really fast back then. And um, I'm really thankful for that job because it helped me to have such a good ability to memorize things. And in my Air Force career, especially at the Air Force Academy, we were required to memorize things all the time. So it really helped my brain to optimize itself by practicing that. And so I want to share with you some of the tips that you can continue to do as you age. Probably you don't want to get a job at uh, camera as a cashier, I don't blame you. And um, even now, today, they use scanners for everything, so you wouldn't have to do that type of memory work. But hopefully some of the tips I give you today will help with your information management, logic, judgment, perspective, and wisdom, um, the tapering off of those due to natural aging. For more information about brain health, I'd really like to encourage you to go to the new website, brainhealth.gov. Um, President Obama initiated this a while back, and it's uh, fascinating what the new research shows, and there's constantly new tips on there. They're, they did the brain mapping project and some other things, and there's lots of resources out there for you to follow, follow through with. Um, I'm not going to go into huge detail on all of those. I'm just going to give you some quick recommendations and put some more stuff in the book. All right, the first element in my model of health, uh, well-being, comfort, health, and happiness for your brain is education. And what that means to me, it's um, my way of explaining it, 
There's very little scientific research on whether or not these three things I'm going to recommend to you really improve the functioning of your brain. However, there's lots of preliminary studies that show these three things probably do improve your brain function over time. And there's lots of personal experience of people that I admire that I've watched their brains continue to function healthy over time. They do these things, such as my grandma who lived to be 94, my dad and my stepmom like I was telling you about last week, um, last installment rather. And I really think that these three things are the crux, the beginning, of how to keep your brain healthy using education. So the first thing is reading. I think it's really important to read every day, maybe 20 minutes a day, preferably a story, a magazine, to keep your brain focused on some content for 20 minutes. It's a really good skill, even if it doesn't keep your brain functioning better over time, it's a really good skill to continue lifelong as a lifelong uh, discipline, actually, so that your brain can focus and concentrate for that length of time. Uh, as they say in many circles, use it or lose it. So I recommend reading 20 minutes a day. Preferably something that requires attention and focus and the ability to um, comprehend ideas and thoughts or a story. Okay, the next thing I recommend are games and puzzles. And there's a lot of debate about this right now in the literature. And um, I'm not going to get into that at all. What I, what I know is that using anything you do to use your brain and keep it active is very helpful. Games require some memorization. They require attention and focus. And so playing games such as Words with Friends, Sudoku, um, Brain HQ, there's a game called that, that's specific brain exercises. Luminosity is another app you can put on your phone that's, um, people have debated and there's a lawsuit on them that they don't improve brain function, but they, there's still a place for these types of things. Video games, my dad really loves the fantasy games where you like World of Warcraft and um, other games where you have to go through a large world and find things and those are incredible for memory and for focus and attention. So I recommend some type of game, wh whatever you like, whatever you enjoy, for again 10 to 20 minutes a day to keep those neurons firing and to help, under help them to not lose their function. The third thing I recommend is that you do some type of continuing education. Either you're taking a course and learning about a new cooking method or you're learning a language. Maybe you wanna learn piano. This is beyond creativity and hobbies that we're gonna talk about later. This is actually learning something new. So to push your brain to be able to focus, remember, pay attention, and use wisdom and perception is going to do nothing but improve those neurons and their connectivity. So I would recommend a new course, a new subject, some type of lifelong learning once a year that you actually really delve into and try to practice weekly. So um, for example, I started YouTube piano lessons a little while ago. I haven't religiously kept up with it, unfortunately. Um, but I, I, there's lots of stuff on YouTube. We have a little electronic keyboard that I was able to use and it was just really good for me to actually sit down and try to learn something new. I don't know how to pay, play the piano. And it was, it was fascinating what it did for my overall well-being. It made me happy to be able to accomplish something new. Actually, it really did. And so maybe you're not drawn to piano, maybe you're drawn to something else, but I think it's really important to at least continue learning and taking things that can be uh, applied to your daily life. And finally, I really want to make a comment about medical education. We're, we've talked a lot about medicine and I want to really highly recommend that if you have any chronic condition or any disability that you follow the medical literature and try to learn about that. Uh, be pro proactive, be your own best advocate, Talk to your doctors. The, the best source of information and education for you about your condition is your doctor. And 
the, the online resources are fairly good, but they can be very misleading. Um, they're written for every situation, and so they tend to be across the board pretty general, and not every person is the same. So remember to continue educating yourself on your health condition as well. Um, one of the really good um, people that I liked their TED Talk, she, she's a so social psychologist, Amy Cuddy. She had a brain, a traumatic brain injury in college and she continued to get her PhD. And I think she's pretty inspiring if you want to check out her TED Talk for how her brain actually rerouted and how functional she is even with a traumatic brain injury. And I've had the privilege, the absolute privilege of meeting several soldiers, sailors, and airmen who have been in traumatic brain injury situations in the military, Humvee bombings and other things in Iraq and Afghanistan. And um, I, it's amazing. I'm, I play words with friends with one of those guys called Jason. He was a Marine and um, he beats me often on the game. And I, I, just, I just love playing with him because I know it works his brain and it works my brain with MS. And we just have a connection. So please just remember to continue doing some of those things. All right, well, I want to thank you for watching this installment of Achieve Well-Being on Education. Next week, we'll continue with the mental aspect of well-being, health, happiness, and comfort for your brain with exploration and networking. And I really look forward to talking to you then. Have a great week, couple weeks, and we'll see you next time. Bye.